Now, false teachers had gone to the church in Colossae to start teaching heresy. So they were teaching the believers there, who were mainly Gentiles, that Jesus is not divine. They said he's just one of the mediators that God uses. You know, he's just one means. He's not the way. He's not the mean to God. So they started teaching um, the Christians, the Gentiles, these false heresies in the churches. And they started believing it. You know, so they were not treating Jesus as Lord anymore. They were not treating him as the Savior anymore. They felt, okay, they could mix, you know, syncretism crept into the church. They could mix other religions. They could mix uh, worshipping angels. They could mix practicing Judaism with Christianity. So they can observe uh, religious festivals. They can circumcise. You know, so all this started happening in the church in Colossae. So um, Epaphras, who had preached to them before, you know, probably one of the main key players in that church, and you know, set them up, taught them about Christ. He now went to Paul. Paul is now in prison in Rome to tell him that this is what is happening in the church in Colossae. Now, Paul has not visited this church before. But Epaphras is a disciple of Paul. So he trained under Paul. And you know, when you train under someone, you also you go out and you make disciples of your own. You don't just train, train under somebody and you sit there until you die. Then it's, it's, it's a failure. It's a failure. You know, so Epaphras had uh, taught these Christians in Colossae. So he went to Paul in prison to say, this is now what is happening and uh, so Paul decides to write this letter to the Christians in Colossae. So this is the uh, letter of uh, Colossians. So this is how this letter came about. Now, scholars disagree on whether Paul is the author of Ephesians and Colossians. And these two books are really similar. That when you read one, you'll think you're, you're reading it again. They're really, really similar in style. They say it's different from the normal letters, the normal Pauline letters. So Paul couldn't have written this. The style is just different. Now, I'm going to treat it as if Paul is the author. You know, if you don't agree Paul is the author, that's fine. We're not going to fall out over it, you know. So you can comment in the box and and teach me, enlighten me. I'm, 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 you know, my heart is open to, to learn. But I'm treating it as Paul is the author. It mentions Paul in the book. It mentions Paul in prison. It mentions Paul in chains. It mentions I, Paul, wrote this with my own hand. So I'm treating it as Paul wrote the letter. So Paul now writes to the Christians in Colossae. He starts by introducing himself, as he always does, as an apostle. Because most of these false teachers, they go about churches that Paul founded and tell the members there that Paul has no authority to do what he's doing. He wasn't one of the 12 that walked physically with Christ. Where did he get his mandate from? You know, who gave him the authority? By which power is he working? So he always has to explain how, even though he did not walk physically with Jesus on earth, Jesus did appear to him, the last apostle. And then he has to tell his story about, you know, when he was going to Damascus to go and persecute the Christians, how Jesus met him, he became blind. Uh, Ananias, through, you know, restored his sight. And he's got, been given that mandate to preach the word to the Gentiles and to the Jews. And that's why he's doing what he's doing. So he does have the right to call himself an apostle. And sadly, even in our day, there's some Christians who feel we should not listen to the words of Paul. We should disregard everything that he said, you know, who gave him the authority. It's still going on till today. So he writes to them. He introduces himself. He prays for them, you know, that he's always uh, thinking about them. He prays that God will strengthen them for this journey and it will be visible in them. And that the Holy Spirit should open their eyes so they can understand more about God, about Yahweh. You know, which is a very, very good uh, prayer for pastors to pray for their members. 
that the Holy Spirit should let them uh, know God more. The Holy Spirit should reveal God more to the members. That's a good prayer. So he's saying in the letter that nobody has seen God physically, but through Jesus, uh, we saw God through Jesus. So you know Jesus came and showed us who God is. So uh, as um, he's the image of God. So you see Jesus, you've seen God. Even Jesus himself said it, that if once you see me, you have seen the Father. So, uh, and Paul was saying that all things were created by Jesus. All things, he's the head, he's the beginning, we are being reconciled to God through him. So it's similar to what he wrote to the in uh, Hebrews, you know, because they persecuted Jews in the book of Hebrews. They were thinking of going back to Judaism because... Um, they, their lives were miserable because they had accepted Christ. They were um, shunned in society. People were not plying their trade, their business. The wives, you know, were not being um, invited to other people's homes. The kids probably sat at different tables in school, not playing with their friends. So it was hard. So the, most of the Jews were thinking about going back to the temple, going back to Judaism. And it wasn't as easy as just going back. They had to actually denounce Christ. So they would stand in front of the congregation and say, okay, Jesus is not Lord. I'm back. You know, it had to be a public denunciation of Christ. So it was really hard. So the writer then of Hebrews was telling them that, why do you want to go back to all of that? Jesus is greater than the angels. Jesus is greater than the sacrifices. Jesus is greater than the priest you know even the priest he has to offer sacrifice for his own sins first before he now offers your sacrifice but jesus is was the last sacrifice he's done it once and for all and he didn't even have to offer a sacrifice for himself because he was sinless though he, be, he, he became sin for us so this was the book of hebrews so it's all that similar in other letters you know that jesus is the substance so why hold on to shadows you know why hold on to shadows so paul is writing to them that god has chosen to now reveal this mystery to gentiles they were not part of the plan it was the jews uh, uh, they were the chosen one they had the covenant they had the circumcision but god now opened the way even though that was his original plan to now include the Gentiles and reveal this mystery to them. So even though the Gentiles were not even looking for a savior, they were not looking for God, you know, they, they weren't thinking about that, but they received the message with an open heart and they believed. And the Jews who knew about the prophecies that there will be a Messiah, there will be a savior, they, they missed it. You know, when it came, they just missed it because they're still looking for another. So uh, Paul is telling them, don't let anybody deceive you with fine arguments, you know, with uh, flowery words and statements. Don't let anyone deceive you. Even though I'm not there with you physically, I'm there spiritually. So he told them not to follow human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Because in Christ, there is the fullness of the deity. In Christ, there is God the Father, there is God the Son, there is God the Holy Spirit. The fullness is in, is in Him. So He's the head of every power. So all these angels you want to worship, God is greater than the angels. So it says that Jesus has circumcised our hearts now. And through, his baptism, through our baptism, we died and we rose again with Him. So even while we were dead in our sin, God made us alive in Jesus. He forgave all our sins. He canceled all our debts. He had our condemnations nailed to the cross. And having made a public spectacle of spirits, of spiritual powers, of uh, powers, authorities, everything, he triumphed over them because of the power of the cross. So he says, don't let anyone judge you by what you eat by what you drink you know don't be because they started uh, practicing judaism again so it's like don't eat this we're following the law of moses don't eat this don't eat that whereas now everything we can eat it just pray over your food he's talked about this so many times he talked about it in ephesians the galatians the hebrews he talked about it in romans eat 
you know but don't let your brother stumble you know if your brother is weak don't let them stumble pray over your food don't ask too many questions and just eat because everything has you know god created everything and now he said we can eat there's no more don't eat this don't eat that so he was telling them that do not join them in worshiping angels so they will not be disqualified on that day we are not supposed to worship angels so he was telling them don't join them because these people were saying we worship angels and everything like that and these uh, new christians they were falling and they also started joining them in worshiping angels paul said so you will not be disqualified don't join them in worshiping angels he said so why are you still behaving like the world like when you were in the world this is these are the things you were doing now that you're in christ why are you still doing it you know they tell you do not handle do not taste do not touch all these rules and regulations everything is now coming back again but remember these rules are temporal but then your spiritual life that is eternal so you should you should put all that so put to death what whatever belongs to your earthly nature you know we were created with that same nature but when we become we are in christ all things are passed away we are now new so put those earthly nature put it to death you know that sexual immorality impurity lust, greed unforgiveness put it to death nail it to the cross and leave it there don't go back and take it and as god's chosen people he said clothe yourself now with kindness with humility with patience with love with joy forgive each other as god has forgiven you your sins so say anything at all that you do do it in the name of jesus so anything you do and he said it also in ephesians now anything you when uh, you eat you drink do it to the glory of god everything you do do it to the glory of god so then uh, there's the similarity here with uh, ephesians a uh, wife submit to your husbands husbands love your wives children obey your parents and um, fathers don't provoke your children to anger and um, slaves obey your masters masters don't maltreat your slaves remember you both have the same god it's the same god in heaven that is god of the master and the slave there's no jew there's no gentile you know don't treat them badly so and then he says they should watch and pray and they should also pray for them so that god may open a door for the message for the gospel message to still be further so even though paul is in prison and he's in chains he's still saying they should pray so that a door can be opened and this message message can still be preached and you know that's the if you have been silenced anywhere maybe not to teach or not to preach pray that god should open a door for your message you know and it, 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 it will it will even go further than the original so if for instance in your church they said okay you can't teach there anymore take a seat pray that god should open a door for your message if it's god's gift in you he will open a door for you and your message will reach even more and it will go further this day of technology there's youtube there's facebook twitter insta snapchat so many avenues nowadays that you can get your message out so it will go further than the four corners of that church where you were pre uh, preaching or teaching or singing. It will go further than that. So just pray that God should open the door. So he's, then he's concluding by saying that their conversation should always be full of grace. You know, season your conversation with salt. So that, you know, it's full of grace. It's sweet words that you talk, tell people and they can know that you're a Christian by how you speak to them. And this Tychicus again, we saw him in Ephesians. Paul sent the letter to Tychicus through Tychicus in Ephesians. Here again, the, I don't know if it's the same man or just some different people with the same name. But Tychicus will tell them all about how he's doing in prison, all about his life and everything. And then he greeted so many other people and um, he sent greetings from people who were with him to the church in Colossae. And he says they should read this letter to other churches as well around uh, Laodicea, not just to them. And they says, then grace be with you. And that's the book of Colossians. 
so thank you so much it's a short book because it's a um, four chapters so it's not the rest of the uh, new testaments now they're just short short books until we get to revelation so thank you so much consider subscribing to my channel um i'm so blessed to that you're all still with me till now i can't do this without you so thank you god bless you bye see you in the next book bye